to the Correct Views. Sam I V, the Ganji, doing political commentary for the media speaks. You are low deaf. Oh my god, look at the beautiful women you're looking at behind you. Behind me, I should say. I'm so I love beautiful women, I can't even talk. On H deaf. Um, don't panic, it probably doesn't look as good on H deaf. That's never thought I'd say that sentence. But it's gonna be the thumbnail for this video. There are some Trump ladies. There you go. Right there where I uh, where I was at, and they were uh, making themselves known when they found out who I was. I thought that was really cool. So there are the Trump ladies, if you will. Guys, the story for the day, while the ladies are beautiful, these stories are dumb, 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 dumb. Because I knew the dunce cap of the month, uh, high def, she's going to be white balancing because we just zoomed in on a TV. It teaches your camera what white is. Um... Guess what? I've got too many dumdies. Thank you. Uh, it bend down because of the camera. The um, dumdies. I have too many dumdies to get to. Way too many dumdies to get to. On one dunce cap of the month show. So what I'm doing is I'm doing extra idiots. The idiots that you still want to know are out there. The fools. The morons. Oh, many of them are your leaders. That looks great. And, um... Christel, um, it's going to be um, a, a chance not to miss these shows because you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to, you will miss these. The level of stupidity that I'm about to go over here is almost mind-blowing. And um, these are people that I have debated sending dunce caps to. This one would have been hard to do because it is on such an international level, but check this out. How is it, let's say... You and your neighbor, you both have firewood. In the back of your house, you got a stack of firewood. Now, your neighbor comes over, takes two or three of your logs every time he takes a bundle of his. Just takes them. And at some point you say, you know, I, I don't mind helping you. Something happens, I get it, you're my friend, you're my ally. But you can't just mosey into my yard like a, a cow and help yourself to my firewood. you got to at some point say, this is my house. <laughs> well, it seems like that statement is angering many people in global markets over what Donald Trump has said. You know why? Because Donald Trump, in essence, has told China that you are going to quit stealing our damn firewood. That's why. Um, that's exactly what this is. They are furious that, you know what, we're not going to outsource our $15 an hour jobs so that you can pay somebody a dollar a day to do it. We're not going to send our men and women to die on your land when you give us nothing back. You are our friend, but at some point, have you guys ever had the guy on the couch, the, the, the friend that overstays its welcome? Well, Trump is pointing out that many of us do in fact feel that way, and the rest of the world blames him. China, for instance, with, with help from American politicians, I admit it, have destroyed the middle class in this country by outsourcing, by NAFTA. And now they're blaming Donald Trump for the fury that we all feel. Do we care? No, we're just going to keep on supporting him. Uh, now hear me out, friends, on this, because I know... Trump can be a rather polarizing figure, but there's some logic in this. Just listen. Donald Trump's first major foreign policy address alarmed American allies who view the Republican frontrunner's repeated invocation of American First Agenda as a threat to the retreat from the world. It is a retreat from the world because the world is bankrupting the country. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe Ron Paul. Am I saying that Donald Trump is as good as Ron Paul? Hell no. But I am saying that they both agree on this. That would be because they are both right. 
While most governments were careful not to comment publicly on the speech by a U.S. presidential candidate, Germany's foreign minister veered from that protocol to express concern at Trump's wording. Now, what you need to remember here is Germany, under Merkel, has allowed... You, you have social justice warriors in this country talking about a rape culture? Now, rape culture, my foot... There is a rape culture in Germany now. You don't believe me? Look up German carnival cancellation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's not a carnival. It's a name for a huge party in Germany. Look up the rapes that are sweeping Germany and Europe as the unvetted immigration has been allowed to metastasize like a cancer through the country. Germany has already ruined their country. So now Germany, here in our idiot show, Germany is condemning Trump for not wanting to allow the same thing to decimate our country. Mind-blowing, isn't it? The world's security architecture has changed, and it's no longer based on two pillars alone. It cannot be conducted unilaterally said this idiot Frank Walter, who said, I can only hope that the election campaign in the USA does not lack perception of reality. No American president can get around this change in international security. Yes, you can. You can say that America is going to take care of America's issues first. If you want us to run to your aid like the policemen of the world, then you will pay us. Just like we pay policemen. You pay your taxes, you know what? You pay the cop. That way, when someone breaks into your house, there's someone to call. The police don't work for free. But somehow, America is supposed to show up, put its cojones on a platter, and invite it for Thanksgiving dinner, and nobody's supposed to say anything about it. Moving on to the, the dumbies. Uh, this would pretty much go to Obama. I didn't want to make Obama a Dunce Cap of the Month award winner because, believe me, I do have cojones. I have mailed not one, but two Dunce Caps to the White House. And I probably, to be quite honest, won't be doing any more because at some point it's probably harassment. He has two terms. I did it twice. I probably won't do it again. Having said that, I'll be tarred and feathered if Obama hasn't damn near earned a dunce cap again. Washington Times. Border Patrol ordered to release illegals still soaking wet from Rio Grande, Union says. So, and I'm part Mexican. All my life I've always heard, oh, wet back, wet back. It's hilarious because, uh, believe it or not, part of my family actually was wet back. Uh, they, they stuck, I had my, my, my dad's side. Uh, I think it was his father, or great-grandfather, or his grandfather that snuck into the country. Yeah, it was uh, allegedly um, related to Pancho Villa. Um, I don't think it should have happened. You, you, you're a product of it yourself. It doesn't mean I think it's a good idea. I didn't, I didn't break any laws in my lifetime. Well, I, I take that back. I, I take that back. I have never broken any border laws in my lifetime, so I don't have anything to apologize for here. But I, I don't think it's a good idea to open your borders to anybody that just wants to go roaming in. To be quite honest, that side of my family at that particular time were not the nicest people I have in the country. Um, the term went back is usually a slur, oftentimes a joke. Call me a wetback, I don't care. Jesus, if I was concerned about such things, I wouldn't put myself out here like I do now. Call me whatever you want, I could care less. Um, you can call me sexy though, ladies. Anyway, um, you have this insane notion that Every little thing you say is going to be offensive to somebody. But the joke is that you're wet back. You just swam in and you snuck into the country. They are literally, it's, it's not like a slur, believe it or not. And I thought this was just too dumb not to mention. Border Patrol agents have been ordered to release dripping wet illegal migrants at the Rio Grande unless they actually see them climbing out of the river. Creating what amounts to an open border with Mexico, the chief of agents' labor union told Congress in a new testimony this week. 
So that's like saying you see me leaving the house with your Blu-ray player, but unless you saw me literally leave your house with it, once I'm on the sidewalk, you can't take your Blu-ray player back. That is what this is. Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Patrol Council, told the House Judiciary Committee that agents were given orders to verbally soon, as, uh, excuse me, orders verbally soon after President Obama laid out plans for limiting immigration enforcement in 2014. Literally, they have swam, swum, swam, swam over. I'm being silly, but friends, I'm dead serious. Literally, they're swimming over. They are caught in the act of climbing out of the water. They don't speak English. They have no ID, and we're not allowed to ask if they might be illegal. Meanwhile, people in this country can't afford health care because Obama has destroyed it. Unless, of course, you have no job at all, then everybody with a job has to pay for it. Does that make sense to anyone? No, that's why it's on the idiot show. Guys, we've got um, SJW, social justice warriors, that is to say, whiners, build a new database to shame people for insulting online comments. PJ Paul Joseph Watson. Um, let me tell you what, here's something for your database. When you find out who I am, when you post my information online, remember that I told you this. Not only did I offend you, but I'm not sorry. You can get on all fours, kiss my ass, rate the taste on Angie's list and spit swap it with your cousin. That's how much I care about your database! A group of social justice warriors are preparing to launch a new database. I'll fart at the time. We're preparing to launch a new database that will encourage users to submit the real identities of people who make insulting comments online, making it easier for leftists to launch witch hunts against people who cause offense. Well, I'm pretty sure I cause offense, and I really don't care. It's called the First Amendment, and I enjoy it. In the name of preventing cyberbullying, a social autopsy will allow users to run a background check on what people have said on social media, with employment and school details also being visible. Let me help you here. YouTube.com slash the correct views. You can't miss it. It's the one that has the intellectual middle finger pointed at you. The creators are promising to break the internet literally and will launch the database with 150,000 profiles of people who are deemed to have made insulting comments or used harsh words. One example of hate speech features in the video is someone saying that no one likes you. If you had any idea the amount of hate that comes just to me for doing this show on any given day, if someone said no one likes you, it would be a good day. Um, I, I, I usually get, I get up and I see one of two things, and I normally ignore both of these. One of them says, you are the greatest political commentator. Um, nobody does it better than you. You're the absolute quickest witted on it. Uh, thank you. I'm humbled. I don't agree. I'm not the best. And then you have people that say you have no talent. You're the ugliest, most unwell spoken. You have the worst diction. You're simply the worst political commentator in all of human history. Your band sucks. Your life sucks. Your wife sucks. Your dog sucks. And everything else that doesn't suck sucks anyway. That's what I wake up to. You know what? That's not true either. I'm not the worst political commentator of all time. So you kind of ignore both of those. We have people here getting offended by someone saying no one likes you. That would be like a gift. Please, if that's, if that's the worst you have to say, I'll thumb up your comment. The system is, of course, completely open to abuse because it will encourage feminists and other leftists to dox and publicly shame people merely for having a different political opinion as happens to me like every day. 
It will also make it easier for malicious social justice warriors to pressure companies into firing employees because they may have offended the special snowflakes who now use social media as their own personal kangaroo court to bully those who dare flaunt politically correct codes of speech. Well, a lot of us really don't care. Um, we won't capitulate. We won't back down. But I do hope you know you can go to hell. Yep. Um, Kit Daniels, university bans golf course from using Trump course and cites social justice. So this is great. What you have is a school here that is going to prove a point by not allowing their students to practice or play at what is one of the nicest golf courses in the country. So they can't practice and they are about to get schlacked because they are going to lose terribly to other schools. I told you, it was the idiot show. You didn't believe me, I told you. Claiming that Donald Trump is antithetical to social justice, a Catholic university has banned its golf team from practicing on a Trump-owned course. Now I guarantee, before his last speech, Trump stayed up weeping about this. I promise you he did. Bear University Vice President Sarah Harold, who just hosed her golf team, claimed that the decision to ban team from playing at the Trump Darrell Golf Course near Miami, Florida was not political, yet admitted that the decision was based on Trump's political positions. As a practice, wait, hold on, hold on. For those of you on low def, I got, I got to get my halo on for this. I couldn't possibly read this without my Hillary Clinton honesty halo. I usually use it for her, but... I mean, in light of this beautiful woman here, here we go. Let me scoot down a little bit. Perfect, perfect. Got my halo on now. As a practice, Barry University does not engage in business relationships where senior leaderships of a company takes a public position or the company's guiding principles are antithetical to the university's core commitments to inclusive community or social justice. The breakdown of that is pretty much if you are opposed to illegals flooding your country, destroying your culture, stealing your jobs, if you are against common sense economic views, then you must be a racist and you must worship the devil and we cannot play golf at your golf course. It's ridiculous. What you're going to find here is that this school is going to have... Uh, yeah, the, the flow chart of their progress is going to be ever downward. Uh, giving up a golf course of that magnitude for such a stupid reason, I ache for the school. Friends, I've got three stories left. Don't go anywhere. All three of those stories are brought to you by the one and only Sticker Junkie. As you can see right there behind me, go to Sticker Junkie, J-U-N-K-I-E dot com, and let them know that you heard about the show from the correct, heard about the Sticker Junkie from the Correct Views. When you go on checkout, type in Correct Views or The Correct Views and you're going to get an amazing deal. Just like you're going to get when you call Change Transportation, don't call Uber. We can call Uber, get a price. Then go to uh, Facebook.com, look up Change Transportation, see if they have anybody in the area, and let them know you heard about it on the correct views, and you are going to get a discount that you are going to love. Friends, Prison Planet has this one. White man claims that he is a seven-year-old Chinese female, and liberal students agree. Now, the interesting thing about this is that you have the one crowd that says, well, Sam, you're a libertarian, and people should be allowed, and the story's not real. Uh, you're a libertarian, you, should, you, you say people can believe whatever they want to, that is true. However, you cannot force other people to believe what you want them to. Um, now, that isn't to say that there isn't a clear distinction between, between right and wrong, because there is. But what I'm saying is, you sometimes, even if you are right, can't make the other side see the light. Much less being wrong and trying to do it. This becomes a problem when you realize, if we as a society w were to actually allow men to be children because they feel like they want to be children, well, a guy that feels like a girl can dress like a girl and sleep with other girls and guys. So, a guy that dresses like a kid can 
you know, be romantically involved with another kid. You know, I felt like a seven-year-old, so I was 50. I, I kissed the little girl on the mouth for the first time. Well, it felt like the first time. Okay, this is getting really disgusting and sick, and this is why this kind of thing is a terrible, 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 did I mention freaking terrible idea? And again, this is more of a, an ex social experiment, but the point is that this mindset is catching on and it's going to be very bad. A viral video posted on YouTube last week shows just how far liberal college students were going to deny basic facts and reality in the name of political correctness. Produced by Joseph Backholm of the Family Policy Institute in Washington, the video entitled College Kids Say the Darndest Things on Identity shows several young students tr struggling to answer the simplest questions on race, gender, and genetics. And it's interesting, what he means is if you're a guy and you go and get your schmeckle cut off, you're still a guy, you're just a mutilated guy. Your DNA is a guy, everything about you is still a guy. All you did was manage to cut your schmeckle off. And, light, and I, I, I think you should be allowed to do so if you want to, just so you know. I'm, I'm not hypocritical here. It's just a, consider it a bad call. I'll be the first to tell you, don't do it. Um, in light of recent debates surrounding bathrooms and those who identify as transgender, Backhold begins the video by asking participants what their response would be if he claimed to be a woman. Besides one skeptical student, the majority believe that Backhold's gender would actually be female if he simply said so. Good for you, one female says. I don't have a problem with it, another says. Would the students Assured that gender can be chosen based merely on feelings, Bakum goes on to claim that he is in fact Chinese. I mean, I might be a little surprised, but I'd say good for you. Yeah, I mean, be who you are, the female student says. Despite becoming increasingly ridiculous, next stating that he is actually a seven-year-old, the young liberals continue, If you feel seven at heart, then it must be good for you, a female student says. Given the fact that Backholm is now identifying as a seven-year-old Chinese female, the students seemingly have no issue with him attending a children's school. I would say as long as you're not hindering society and you're not causing harm to other people, I feel like that should be an okay thing, a male student says. In an attempt to reach the ultimate absurdity, Backholm next states that he is six feet five inches, despite actually being five. Nine! I feel like that's my place as another human to say someone is wrong or to draw the lines as a boundary, a young woman answers. So, you know, this is the absurdity that we now live in. This is the insane, maddening inability to even call white, white, black, black, red, red, nothing. Up is down. Everything is bent. Friends, that's why I'm out here talking in the middle of the night into a camera. Um, two more stories, including uh, I got the ultimate dumdy coming here. I'm even going to get the uh, theme music ready for you. I've got two stories left, but I mean, and this ain't even the dunce cap of the month, keep in mind. That's going to be coming at a, another time here. All right, friends. We got we to gotta do it. Hate crime hoax, black student admits she was behind threat to kill all blacks at Keene University. Now, how many times have I told you that this entire race thing, this entire white privilege crap, all of this is a way to divide us? You can be a very well-off or rich person, far richer than you and I are probably ever going to be, and still be a good person. Justin Amish comes to mind. Rand Paul is not the new uh, Ron Paul, by the way. I was discussing this with my friend earlier. The new, Rand, the new Ron Paul is actually Justin Amish. Um, you can have assets and money and not be crap. But no, we want to divide based on how much money we make. Well, there's other people that want us to divide on what color we are. And if you do that enough, you will get the big fail. People will start dividing on this. People will wake up in the morning and look for new ways that they are a victim. 
Information Liberation, Chris uh, Manahan. I think it's his first time on the show, as is that site, so welcome aboard. A black female college student has admitted that she was behind a series of racist death threats tweeted out to black students at Keene University. Goes on to say the prosecutors say the 25-year-old Kayla McElvey posted the threatening tweets late last year because she wanted people to show up at her rally for racial injustice. So she couldn't find any real injustice, so she made her own. She should be an engineer, not a social justice warrior. Imagine what she could create. And then, incidentally, she didn't feel there was enough racial strife on campus to actually drive people to attend her rally, so she created a fake Twitter handle. Uh, it looks like Kinal Guinness Book to stir some up. I don't know, let me screen share this. It looks like an eye chart, not a name. I, if, I, if I had a hundred years and wanted to bore all my listeners to death, I'd actually make it out. It's probably clever in her mind. Um, tweeting to police, she wrote, at KU Police, I will kill all blacks tonight, tomorrow, and any other day if they go to Keene University. Another tweet that I will shoot any black person I see at Keene University. She also tweeted on a bomb threat that, threat that there's a bomb on campus. <sighs> State prosecutors are now seeking to jail her for 90 days and make her pay restitution for the $82,000 to reimburse the university for the money they wasted responding to her fake threats. We've seen earlier this month uh, reported on another similar case. I think we covered this here. Where a Muslim woman said a white man slashed her face, calling her an effing terrorist. It never happened. She slashed herself. Two months ago, three black students at the Uni of Albany claimed that they were jumped on a bus by people who called them the N-word. And then, of course, video from bus surveillance shows that they made the whole thing up and they were, in fact, assaulting other people. So, guys, they, they're, unfortunately, our leaders are winning. The, the, that's the bad news for the day, okay? The idiots are winning. The people that want us to divide, they're winning. They're absolutely winning. There's no way you can say they're not. And that brings us to the big dumdy, the ultimate dumdy, the dumdy of the day. Let me unmute the tab here. Three, two, one. Oh, let's hear it. Now let it ring. Let's let it play for a minute. Thank you, Al516, for the post. Um, student rep on free speech. Some people have more equal rights than others. Another one from PJ Dub. Shout out to Paul Joseph Watson for finding me dumbies during a debate about the threat to free speech on the university campuses. Richard Brooks, the vice president of the National Union of Students, almost quoted George Orwell's Animal Farm directly when he said, quote, some people have more equal rights <laughs> than others. As by host Victoria Derbyshire, are so many people being silenced, Brooks said that the NUS no platform policy was a way of preventing fascists and racists from speaking on campus. Brooks claimed that the organization's safe speech policy is based on the idea that every single person has freedom of speech and everyone has equal right to freedom of speech. However, some people have more equal rights than others. Brooks claimed that the organ, excuse me, uh, Brooks added that prioritizing the opinions of some people over others, i.e. not believing in equality, was a means of ensuring that marginalized groups get their views heard. You know, yeah, because Trump is winning by the majority, but Trump followers are the minority. They're, they're, they're an oppressed group, I guess. Brooks added that prioritizing the opinions of some people over others is perfectly okay. I mean, he thinks it's great. It's not censorship, but it's progressive, he says. The statement sounds similar, but even creepier when you listen to the Soviet National Anthem as a backing track. There's a link up here. This is another example of how leftists don't believe in equality. They believe in oppression Olympics, where some people's views are deemed more important due to their skin color, gender, sexual identity, or religion. 
and therefore it is necessary to sideline and censor the views of people who don't have one of those special privileges. When Brooks, it says, was later accused by somebody on Twitter of sounding Orwellian, he claimed that he was simply referring to how people in society have more power than others. Oral's Animal Farm, which was published in 1945, writes P.J. Dove. I'm going to go to screen share one more time. It's an allegorical critique of Stalinism and communism. Many of you don't know this, but Stalin killed more people than Hitler. So when you say that Stalinism, which is a form of communism, which is a form of socialism, is a bad idea, that's why you say it. In the story, one of the pigs, Squealer, is tasked with revising history in order to exert authority over the other characters and limit their ability to challenge the pig's power monopoly. Squealer changes the seven commandments from all animals are equal to all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. The fact that Brooks' statement in closing is lifted almost word for word from Animal Farm, a book which was written as a warning about what happens when socialist ideas are hijacked by corrupt individuals was used to oppressive, oppress others is chilling. In other words, the joke that proved a point about where socialism and that whole mindset leads to happened in real life, and it wasn't a joke. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. You can donate to the show by going to thecorrectviews at hotmail.com and asking me, where do I send it? Uh, why am I asking for money? Because lights and computers and research time and production and equipment and gear cost a fortune. And when you donate to the show, I can bring you a better show. Um, HDEF, you will be produced and put up shortly. You guys on low def, thank you for watching. Good night, God bless, and please hit subscribe and hit share, share, hit share, because when you do, it helps the show immensely. You have no idea. Good night, friends. God bless. Where were you when I needed it the most? Remember, deliver just words for the most. I keep your love box all alone. The winning.